Well, hello. How are we all doing today? Hope everybody's doing wonderful. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Uh, or afternoon, as it were. It's kind of morning for me. I hope you all are doing great. Hey, Rody, What's up? <laughs> oh, the, no punishing today, bro. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I've been running that intro for, uh, I don't know, three months now. I just use it every once in a while, though. Uh, I had time today to stage it. Uh, Steven, what's up? Rody, uh, Andy, welcome, brother. Uh, it's very good to see you all here. So I'm back on the, um, the um, I don't remember what brand the guitar this is. This is one of the worst uh, necks I've ever had to work on. Really um, pretty terrible. It's a Traveler guitar. Um, let's see. Overhead, it's, it's called an overhead first class. And um, unfortunately this neck was really built terribly. And the way, I think the mechanics of the instrument are causing problems um, that uh, might otherwise not happen if the neck didn't come off of the instrument. There's the latching mechanism on the on the neck itself. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that all works here uh, before too much longer. Um, I need to stay very busy today because I'm very busy. And uh, let me show you uh, a little bit why I'm so busy. Uh, over there uh, is a uh, Marshall, I think it's a JVM 900 that came in that's um, um, red plating uh, tubes and he's burned up a set of, um, I think they're EL84s or the American 6881s. And then I've got another guitar that came in over the weekend. Here's the case for the uh, this one. Uh, so if you're getting dizzy, I apologize. So I'll talk to my cameraman. And then there's another one. Where did it go? Uh, oh, I put it back in the back room uh, that uh, came in over the weekend, so I got loaded up uh, very heavily uh, this weekend with regard to the amount of work that I've got to get done. So doing the live stream uh, is going to be kind of interesting. Um, I'll try and keep you all focused. So what I'm doing here now, I've just, uh, since the last time I worked on this instrument, I have leveled and crowned the frets on this thing it needed it um i had to give it some fall away because this is the 12th fret on this guitar uh fretting a note here at the 10th and sometimes the 11th fret would catch up here on these frets so these were very tall and they were pulling out i have glued down all of the frets along here with ca glue so that they won't push back out um, so i've done a lot of work on this guitar since the last time uh, i saw y'all uh, about this instrument that I think I did last Thursday. So I'm just treating it with some linseed oil. I'm um, gonna bring the wood grain back to life. And then we're gonna get seeing how good of a uh, job I did and if the fret level solves the problem that this guitar was having, which was tall frets. And when you clamp the, you put, tighten the uh, nut into this. Uh, the guitar body has a nut that tightens into this, and I don't know if pulling that in did something to the fingerboard um, or caused uh, an issue on this guitar. I, I can't really say because um, it's kind of a, uh, a new uh, prospect for me to encounter. Um, guitar was built in China, of course. Um, not that that makes any difference at all, uh, aside from the fact that if it was built in Aberdeen, Washington, where my good friend Stephen lives, it would probably not have this problem. So, uh, that's about all I can say about that. Uh, I don't know if Stephen would even risk trying to engineer something like this. Uh, kind of interesting uh, design. So, uh, I've gotten this all dialed in. And now I need to go up here to the headstock and put this Mambo Jihambo, I like to call it, back in the guitar. This is a string guide, I, I'm guessing. Um, Got to remember. Let's see. So this sits like this. 
and like of course I dropped it Butterfingers oh my goodness I did not need that there it is okay I found it I found it okay so I believe this goes let's see bolts on like this wait no it bolts on like this and then this piece goes here no here like this there we go and then the strings pass through those little slots um, to keep everything squared away so i'm going to put this back on the instrument and you get to watch me turn some screws here for a moment you know, this is a really odd um, video because I don't work on guitars like this, and I don't think many um, guitar techs, luthiers, whatever you want to call me, um, get to do stuff, work on an instrument like this. Right? Now, there's a very... Uh, I'm going to magnetize my screwdriver before I lose a screw. Any questions? I'll do my best to answer them, but... Uh, hey, Valerie. Welcome. Um, <laughs> we were here early for the nut jokes. Well, I'm going to put a nut back on this instrument uh, today. No joke. Um, very serious. All right. So there's that. All right. And I need to keep the uh, truss rod area open because I am going to have to turn that. Got a little bit of glue. Hoping you guys can see okay here. I'm doing my best not to wiggle this camera around all over the place. Let me get the angle right. There we go. Should be pointed at the headstock. Okay, I'm going to glue the nut into place. Alright, here we go. I use uh, this gel type um, Max Secure. Um, super glue, it's wonderful stuff. Stays where you want it. I'm going to show you how this stuff looks. Hopefully my... Uh, oh yeah, got way too much. I'm going to put a small dot here. And a small dot here. It doesn't take any more than that. You want to be able to get this thing back off of here if uh, duty calls at some point in the future. You always got to think about the next guy. And it's usually going to be me around these parts. There's that. So I've leveled uh, the frets, leveled and crowned and polished uh, the frets. And they look really nice. I'm going to hit this with a little uh, hardener. Oh, there it is. We'll make sure that that super glue holds it in place. All right. This is great stuff to have. Uh, it's actually, um, let's see, do I have the bottle here? I don't. That, that, this would be the last of it that I've gotten, uh, that I have of that. Um, I did do a little bit of work on the nut to uh, help with uh, the string pinch, uh, so the strings aren't getting pinched in the nut, uh, and they so they, they flow properly. If you bend a note on the instrument, that it won't get hung up in the nut of this guitar it is set up for 11 gauge uh, strings. We're going to use a lighter gauge string on this instrument. Uh, not for any particular reason other than that's what uh, we decided to use. Had a really interesting discussion about the string butler. Um, and I think that, that that device is probably a good solve for a lot of guitar players. If you don't have nut files and you can't have someone set up a, a Les Paul style guitar, um, 
you know, having a, a string butler out here to help keep your strings in alignment is a good thing. But if they're being pinched in the nut, the, the string butler is absolutely pointless. Uh, so that should be the first thing that you solve if you're having trouble keeping a guitar in tune and you're bending notes here or you're pushing down on them on the opposite side of the headstock to create an up bend as if you had a, uh, uh, a B bender on your instrument. Okay, so this is looking really nice. Uh, I'm really happy with the way this uh, is turning out at this point. So let's uh, get this over here. Again, I'm like my camera guys I need to talk with him let's see uh, hey. oh, I'd love for you to have one man uh, unfortunately when I had these made uh, I think you're a bigger dude than my than I am and the, the biggest ones I could get were in a large size so they don't fit 98% of America uh, I happen to be a little guy and this is a uh, this is a large and as you can see, um, it it barely fits me. Uh, and I, but I appreciate your interest. I do have a few at home, and I'll look through them. Uh, a good friend of mine is gonna receive one, but he's another kind of small guy. Uh, I was born this way, so. <laughs> uh, love to find a brass nut. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about that actually right as we speak. He's hearing you, uh, Rody. The big dilemma. How many people have worked for some place and not gotten raised in five years? Curious. Just curious. <laughs> Valerie, you have a very interesting uh, channel. Uh, I don't participate in it much just as it's way off the psychedelic realm for me. Um, but uh, <laughs> Rody, are you still working? Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, let's get the body back on this and see what happens when we restring it. Um, here is the uh, bag that the instrument comes in. And let me see if I can find the zipper. Where is it? Oh. I did it right. Okay. And then I got to put the thing back in this when I'm done, so that'll be interesting. Uh, so it comes all fitted in this nice uh, carrying bag. Pretty cool. The body. You can see the mounting mechanism here uh, for the neck. So let's see what happens let's see if I can hopefully I can get this in the in the picture um, so there's a button here on the top of this instrument and as you push this down it snaps into place and then you cinch up the uh, nut to hold it tight and when it when this cinches down when it gets tight I can feel it suck that neck into the uh, into the body of the guitar and this is the part that I'm really concerned about causing problems because uh, if you're not if you take it apart and put it back together again and you don't put the exact same tension on it is it actually the neck set at the correct angle I think you all can kind of gather uh, the issues that that uh, potentially could cause um, I'm just putting it on there snug um, and now we'll uh, throw some strings on this. Now, um, some other details uh, on things that I've done on this guitar. I reworked the, uh, the saddle. It has a new saddle on it that I built for it. It's a compensated saddle. Um, 
but uh, because the neck comes off of this and goes back on, um, the strings will pass over the saddle in different places. You put it on and it'll go over, you know, clear over here one time and then it'll go over clear over here the other time. And what happened on the old nut was that uh, it had multiple notches in it. So the string spacing was always, every time you put the guitar on, the strings would space out differently. Uh, so I have taken my nut files and um, put small notches in the saddle and have spoken with the owner that when he puts the neck back on this thing that, that those strings need to pass through those slots. And something I did the other day, and I'm going to do it one more time today, is I'm taking a, a, a pencil and marking those slots as well as I can so that you can see where that string is supposed to pass through there. Um, I almost feel like it would be wise to maybe uh, go over the top of this uh, saddle with some black um, paint so you can see those slots, but a, a number two pencil should um, make those, those locations very evident where the string should pass. It shouldn't go to one side or the other. So uh, it strings up like uh, basically like a normal acoustic guitar. I'm using some uh, Everly uh, Sessions. Actually, I'm using. I'm, I, forgive me. I told you the wrong string gauge. This is gauge to 12 gauge. It was a different guitar that I was working on that we did 11s on. Um, and Everly strings have been really uh, pretty consistent for me. They stretch really nicely. Um, they hold tune really well for an acoustic set. We do have electric and acoustic sets of Everly strings here at our shop, and they're. Pretty affordable, actually. We don't make a whole lot of money when we sell a set of strings. So we're going to go ahead and get these in here. I'm going to go ahead and angle. Just put a small angle on each one of these uh, end pins so that the string goes in there correctly doesn't get pinched up on the end of that. These actually do have, these end pins are actually pretty cool. I'll show you one here, try and get you an up close uh, view of what they're like. Uh, kind of an ingenious uh, design uh, with them. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I still have that nut, uh, uh, Richard, and uh, I haven't had anybody come in and ask for a brass nut, so <laughs> uh, it's still where it was. Here are the end pins, and you'll notice that the end of that is actually um, conical shaped. Um, I don't know how well this camera is going to pick this up, but that does help the string to pass uh through so it doesn't get pin, pinched on the end of that um, uh, end pin. But I'm going to go with that one step further and just take a little bit off of the front edge where the slot is so that these strings will definitely end up where they're supposed to end up uh, to create the most contact with the top of the guitar to create some acoustic vibrations and such. This can really help the sound of your acoustic guitar if you're putting your strings on and they get stuck on the end of a machine or a end pin as long as they're, uh, the balls are touching. The, the, <laughs> we're talking about balls and nuts here at the same time. Um, as long as the ball end uh, touches the, the top of the guitar or the bridge uh, plate that's underneath this uh, saddle, saddle plate, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, you got good contact with that. You're going to get a potentially a better acoustic uh, response out of the guitar. Typically, it'll be a little bit louder. If they're pinned against the end of that um, end pin, um, you're going to lose some of the sustain 
and often you'll lose a lot of brightness of the instrument. So figured why not? And these are ebony uh, pins, so that's kind of nice. Uh, one thing I just noticed is that uh, the string passes over a little sharp spot on this. It's, uh, <laughs> that stuff is amazing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I have one of those. I got yeah, one too. Yeah. I, need, I need another one. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be louder, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm in a hurry for you. I know you guys are slammed. I just thought I'd ask if you still have a door kit you had to order for or something. I'm what are you after, Chris? Nothing. I'm just oh. looking. I'm just Let looking. Let me know if I can grab something for you. Oh, yeah, we got him. Yeah. Uh, so let's put that in the scale. This has really short uh, machine heads on it, um, which not a big fan of that design, so we'll I'd like to have enough room to get a couple of wines on there, but as you can see, this one's uh, it's bottoming out. Now, as I tighten it up, it's starting to starting to get back into shape. And often, what I'll do is I'll I'll use a little bit of a pry force here to pull the string to undo that loop that happens on these and this is just a unfortunate um, problem with having really short machine heads on an acoustic instrument which is very common uh, so, usually on the low E string is the one string that has that that issue I'm not a fan of that um, there's no excuse why they couldn't have put machine heads on here that are a sixteenth of an inch longer. Um, just no reason. I'm just tuning by ear at this point. Isn't this exciting? We've all seen this a thousand times, right? Two wraps. I use my fingernail, push the string down over the top of your windings. This guitar will hold tune until you break it. this uh, installed on this instrument is when you take the neck off it holds the strings in place it's not a, a necessarily like a locking nut or anything like that it just ultimately is basically putting a capo on the uh, on the machine head side of the uh, nut holds the strings in place while the guitar is disassembled. And, you know, if you don't have to do a bunch of work on this thing... If you don't have to do a bunch of work on this thing, that thing is gold, but for working on this thing, <laughs> kind of creates a little uh, barrier that you got to work around. One, two three wraps on the unwound strings if you've watched any of my videos you've seen me do this a bunch of times oh come on boy Okay. 
I know this is real exciting. And forgive me for not engaging with the chat, but I am working right now. Welcome to the bench. Oh, when the saints. That's your G and B interval. If you want to know what a major third interval is, sing Oh, when the saints. And the first two notes you'll sing will be the. Uh, interval of a major third. It's a great way to uh, memorize your uh, intervals so that you can tell what they are uh, if you hear one in a song. I mean, the beginning of Ride the Lightning by Metallica. That's a tritone. That's a tritone interval. The Superman theme is a perfect fifth. Da, 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 da. Here comes the bride is a perfect fourth. Here comes the bride. I think I'm a little bit flat, but we'll we'll check how close my ear was. some of these strings off a little prematurely uh, I don't want to get poked in the eye it's a short scale guitar very short scale so, so I'm gonna give these a little tug here and stretch them just a bit Give them a nice little move you back down here and bring you up to up to height here so we can see what I'm doing. Hopefully uh, this isn't too terribly boring. I'm just uh, checking the string action and to make sure that I don't have any more fret buzz. This thing was buzzing. I'll show you the locations. I didn't shoot video of that. I was working and just didn't have time. check our string action now seems to be pretty darn low well, let's, let's look at the string action here at the 12th yeah it's pretty darn low but it's very low I may have to shim the saddle after doing that and again I don't know if taking the neck off and putting it back on is changing this a bunch. I've, I've put it on and taken it off a couple of times, and um, I have no idea if this guitar is even playable. We're about to find out. Yes, I have to play guitar at work, and yes, I get paid very little to do this. But, boy, I could do other bad stuff. Okay, now, before I started working on the guitar, I could not do that. I would get to here, and it would fret that note. So this fret was tall.
and the string action is way too low on this guitar. Intonation is now uh, pretty good. So tell that I need to uh, shim the neck. Hmm. Well, I'll be dipped. <laughs> well, that was fun. Hey Zach, my brother in arms. Check out those arms, man. <laughs> uh, Charlie, hey brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I fire him, but this would be a really boring uh, <clears throat> video if it isn't already. If I fired him. Okay, so I need to shim um, the uh, saddle up a little bit the saddle is way too low and also uh, having <laughs> hey well while you're all down there <laughs> oh my goodness wow uh here's a look around what i got going uh yeah yeah okay Um, I'm going to move, rearrange uh, some stuff. Oh, and by the way, uh, I did get asked about t-shirts uh, today. If you want a t-shirt, they're 35 bucks plus shipping. So uh, that's how much it costs. Inflation, isn't it wonderful? Brad, what's up? Okay, uh, that's why I just don't, I don't even really offer them up for sale. It's far too expensive. I make nothing on that, and you get a t-shirt that you could probably just go to copy it from, uh, I don't know, some t-shirt manufacturing company, and at least they would make a little bit of money. Okay, um, so let's do a little bit of work on this saddle. Um, Here's a common way that I shim, and I'm going to shim this saddle because I did some work on it and it's now too short, which I expected. Uh, so, uh, let's see. So, I've got a pair of scissors and a, uh, a uh, pick guard that would go on a guitar or something like this, right? And uh, it's got some. Uh, sticky dicky stuff on it and I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the strings what do we get oh sweet uh, 
Awesome. Yeah. Oh, these bad boys. Those are going to make a, uh, a few amps work again. Uh, check out what I just got. I love getting product uh, so that I have it in stock. This is like way, 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 way too many. Probably, this will last me a good 10 years, probably. But um, on all your uh, cheap-ass amplifiers that everybody buys from Fender, PV, um, you name a company, they put these types of... Um, input jacks in them and the moment you step on your guitar cable it snaps off this uh, thread right here um, it happens every time um, there's almost no stopping it by a cheap ass uh, speaker powered speaker something like that this is what they use and this will save the life without having to go buy a new amplifier or, or uh, whatever which you know it generally is almost as cheap as paying someone to fix it but usually that's a pretty delicate balancing act you know you tell somebody well it's 80 bucks to change the input jack on it and I'll have you know 45 minutes of my time into it probably taking it apart sometimes you can get them done in a half an hour taking it apart unsoldering it putting it back together again good grief it's a lot of work so uh, we are digging into getting this saddle shimmed I know that my distance here was 464, and I would like it to be at 564. So it's way too low on the the treble um, treble E and B and G strings are way too close at this point. And that just has to do with the way the way this uh, saddle was built originally. So we'll take care of that right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, capo on this instrument. So to keep the strings from falling off, the, it already has one, but I'm going to just go back to my basics and what I usually do. I put a capo on there to keep the strings from coming off, completely coming off the, uh, the machine heads. It's dangerous because you got these sharp pointy strings sticking up off these machine heads. Boy, you can stick one in your finger really easy. But if you cut them off short, I guarantee you, you'll have to pull that string off the machine head. And you'll have a really, really super fun time trying to get it rewound back on there. It's so fun. Alright. So now what I've got to do... Um, show you how I do this. We just do it one step at a time. One step beyond. Um, let's see. Where are my? Where are my favorite pair of uh, bent? Here they are. I'll pull this saddle out of here. Want to be careful doing this so you don't scratch up the the bridge of an instrument which usually can be solved but this one fits really tight into this slot so which I like okay so we've got the saddle oops let's get the camera gotta I gotta talk to my camera guy I'm telling you uh, okay so we've got our saddle there and we want to cut this wide enough to fit that saddle slot a great thin little piece of plastic that I use here. I'm not opposed to using plastic for a shim on a saddle. It's just raising the saddle up enough to uh, make the string action correct. When I cut it long enough that it will fit in here. It's a little too wide in one spot I can see. I'm going to trim this off just a little. Don't cut your fingers, Marshall. There we go. Does not have to be perfect. Let's put this in this direction. Still a little bit too wide. Right along in here. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the plastic sticky. And I usually take my fingers and kind of work the sticky stuff over a little bit so that removes a little bit of it, maybe gets a little bit of my dust or oil from my fingers on there so that the next guy that has to work on this instrument can get this out of there. Always thinking about the next guy. You cannot, you can take the plumber, the boy away from the plumbing, but you can't take the plumber out of the boy. It's like taking the kid out of the city, but you can't take the city out of the kid. All right. All right. Let's see. Now, why am I shimming this and not putting a new saddle in here? Money. That's why. Entirely money. I don't want to cost this owner of this guitar a bunch of money to repair it. It's not a terribly valuable guitar to begin with. Poker. I'm going to get my, my ice pick. It's over. Sold a drum kit already today. There's a new drummer that's going to be amongst us in the music world here coming soon. This young man came in with his mom about still a little bit too wide down at this end. Came in with his mom about uh oh it's been four months ago and uh she bought him a practice pad that most drummers don't even own i do own one by the way uh, and i'm not a drummer per se but nobody knows that i actually am a pretty fluid drummer love playing drums I just don't live in a place where I can do it right now. Too loud. My neighbors would get mad. And our shim is keeps wanting to turn sideways. That's you know, it's like a it's like a guitar string or a wire if you're trying to solder something. It will go anywhere and everywhere but where you want it to go. It will go sideways instead of laying flat. So I'm going to have to do this like 8 or 12 times. <laughs> oh, let's see. It's probably just a little bit too wide still. I'm going to cut this end off a little more squarely. Don't cut your finger. I want it to fit this slot really tight. Um, I have a really good sharp pair of the scissors. Okay. Ah, come on now. Come on now, Shim. Go where you're supposed to go. Again, it will go everywhere you don't want it to go. Isn't this fun to watch me stumble around with this thing? Little piece of plastic. Good grief. This one is playing hard to get. Okay, so right there. I'm gonna give me a moment. Boy, it's close. It's just like just that teeny red one too wide. I'm not sure if any of you or many of you have shipped anything to Canada recently, but boy, 
when the shipping costs as much as the gift. That's insane. It's insane. I'm going to go ahead and use this little guy. It's a flathead screwdriver to get this thing to lay flat in here. Now we're talking. There we go. Bring this back. And there's eight other ways I could have done that, but that's how I did it. Now I want to give this a little tap just to make sure it seated. Very good. I love hitting a guitar with a hammer. It's my favorite thing. see where we're at we will see where we're at this is a really kind of a unique uh, video uh, simply because uh, I've never seen anybody on any guitar repair uh, video work work on an instrument like this ever uh, yeah the traveler guitars get worked on well, I've worked on several of those. But, uh, and I can see already that when I'm restringing this, these strings fall into the slots that I had dictated. And I can see exactly where they're, where they're supposed to land. So that's kind of cool with putting, having uh, colored the, the slots in there. There we go. I need to talk to my cameraman. He's not Johnny on the spot, man. Let's see how close I was. you put a shim in a saddle on an acoustic guitar it's a great technique to use um, I know we all don't have a uh, a uh, you know an extra pick guard laying around usually um, but you can use other stuff uh, you can use a piece of wood for sure We're still just a little bit low. I'd like to bring this string action up just a bit more. I'm going to put one more shim in here. That's what we're going to do. Because we got to do it. Sometimes uh, doing something once isn't uh, enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, William. Hey, welcome, William. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, I really appreciate everybody uh, hanging with me. Uh, and hopefully, uh, most importantly, that you learn something from this channel. Um, I'm not sitting around dicking with a, a guitar and playing uh, or, you know, fucking with some new um, synthesizer that's the new hot thing. Um, I'm actually uh, hopefully teaching y'all how to uh, make repairs on your instruments um, 
that uh, this is important stuff on actual acoustic instruments, whether it be an electric guitar or an acoustic guitar, a drum, a banjo, whatever. Um, I enjoy sharing um, my knowledge. Um, also, I was a journeyman plumber for a lot of years, and I had to train guys to plumb houses. And it was one of the most rewarding parts of my life. I, I just totally loved teaching. And I've said it many, many times, if I had to do it over again, I would have become a school teacher. I would have loved to have done that. I love kids. Um, and um, I love interacting with the parents. I still am able to teach. Uh, and I teach guitar. Yeah, so really super fun. And it's, uh, it's, it's uh, really uh, interesting in recent weeks how I've, uh, uh, on YouTube, I'm not ever going to be a big channel. Uh, I don't have boobs and I don't wear fancy makeup and I don't do anything super spectacular. Uh, I just do educational stuff. And it's really interesting to see my subscriber count grow the way it has. I'm, I'm grateful uh, for that. And a lot of people um, never interact with me, so that's kind of it's kind of fun to have that uh, to see that. I've had a lot of videos recently really get a, a boost in numbers, which is great because I know somebody can learn something from it. My my channel was definitely not built around recording music um, or my songs in particular. I'm not trying to. Uh, get famous with that I, I gave that a shot when i was 19 got pregnant and that ended so just been a professional And I don't know if, um, if Steven is still here, but I'm curious of uh, the progress that's been happening on that P-Base. And um, if there's any way I might be able to show some folks where it's at right now. Um, you could email me a photograph or something. I could uh, share that with folks. Um, if you all know, Steven is uh, a luthier out of Aberdeen, Washington. He's just not far down the road. From where I live, um, I could drive to his house and be there for dinner uh, tonight. I should think about doing that one of these days. Of course, I could do that with the Falcro also, but then I'd have to play Ruby, and that would that'd make Richard really mad, probably. <laughs> Ruby or EVH, I don't remember what you're calling the... Oh, Dougie. Dougie. Again. So what I just did there was I dipped this, uh, this sticky side of this uh, shim in uh, some uh, bone, bone powder uh, so that I can get it out of here if I need to. Still just a really teeny red one too long. Always just sneak up on it. You want to get these cut to the right uh, width. We'll get you pointed at the action down here. You want to cut them at just the right width so that they fit really nice and, and snug in here. Um, so you don't have big gaps on either end of the, the shim under a a saddle. Here we go. And just like that, raised it up another, I don't know, two sixty fourths of an inch. Now we're talking. This is looking pretty sweet. Uh, I want to tap this with a hammer. Make sure we sat down flat. There we go. Love hitting a guitar with a hammer. One of my favorite things. Okay, Hugh, what's up, brother? How we doing today, Hugh? I 
I really should know what time it is where you are, bro, but I don't. I'm, I'm just terribly lazy when it comes to that sort of stuff. I should have all the time time uh, zones memorized, but I don't. I'm guessing it's fairly early in the evening over there, or maybe, maybe. You working on anything exciting today? I'm thinking this might be the, the step that we're looking for. Ooh, you know what I just did? I thought that looked a little funny. I just put the wrong nut or saddle in this guitar. Yes, I did. I'm hurrying. Let's fix this. You gotta do it over. Do over. I hadn't done that. Wasted steps is all it is. Okay, so I'm going to avoid doing that again real quick by uh, put this saddle, get it out of the way. I thought that looked a little strange because it was sitting up really tall. I was like, what the hell? Oh, the way thicker uh, shim than I thought it was. Now we're talking. Now I got the right one in there. Every time I try and walk on water, my ankles get wet. So much fun. Can you imagine doing this all day, every day? <laughs> and obviously, I don't do this all day long, every day, but I've got some really cool stuff and odd stuff coming up uh, to to uh, get get busy with. Really looking forward to making that Marshall amp come back to life. That'll be cool. I've heard the amp uh, live, and the guy that owns the amp is just a fantastic guitar player. All right, so... Uh... This is getting to the point now uh, where I'm really liking where the string action is at. Um, I'm really liking where the string action is at on this thing, and it's tuned up to uh, E standard uh, or A at 440 hertz. Um,
this thing is really coming to life now. Um, let's uh, let's plug this thing in and see how she uh, sounds with electronicals. It does have a pickup in it, um, and to my knowledge, yeah, there's no preamp, so it's just straight up a uh, straight up acoustic guitar and. Uh, <clears throat> Something we just discovered, uh, the, this terrible design where they don't put flat edges on these so that you can really cinch them up. This was loose, and had I not noticed that, it probably would have fallen off of there. Um, I'm not a big fan of those. I like, I like the ones. I love the, having the output jack right there on an acoustic guitar that has a pickup system in it versus like someplace else on the guitar, but the fact that they make those things round and... There's like not really a, a really solid way to tighten it up without actually scratching the chrome or nickel plating, whatever uh, they use. I'm not a fan, but let's plug this baby in. Oh, okay. I just discovered. One of my pedals is about ready to fall apart, and that's great. I need a new one. Have no idea. Hey, it works. It works plugged in. Let's see what this thing sounds like. Um... now needs is some nut work. I need to work on the nut a little bit which I will get to here in a few minutes 
I'm going to save you all the agony of watching me do that one more time because you've seen me do it. I don't know how many times. Hello, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Preston. It feels really nice to play and, you know, working on them uh, and, and having the opportunity to actually play them when I'm done doing a setup on a guitar is really a blessing. I, I don't know... Um, I don't know if a lot of guys that actually work on guitars have the same type of opportunity that I have um, given the circumstances that I work under. Um, so I'm really lucky to have that opportunity. I know that uh, probably guys in big cities, uh, Portland, Salem, you know, LA, New York, they probably get to set up and measure a guitar, and, uh, and then they go, oh, it's measured right, and then they don't ever get to touch the thing, play it. So I'm really lucky, I guess. And my clients are really lucky, I, I guess. Yeah, and no, um, no volume controls or any other uh, types of controls on the instrument so you know when it's plugged in it just is what it is um, yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey Falcro thanks man uh, you want nut work see the problem with this one Hugh you will appreciate this beyond all measure because I know you've worked on nuts a lot we, we don't need to talk about that. Uh, however, <laughs> Valerie, unfortunately, Valerie's probably gone, so she's missing all this. But uh, I've got a, uh, a barrier, a block right here. And if I undo this, if I take this off of here, this is such a pain in the ass to get back on the guitar with strings on it. I, I just... Uh, I don't really want to do it. And... Uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm up against here. I leveled the frets. I leveled and crowned all the frets. So that one's too high. That one's way too high. That should be fretting a note. So what we should hear is when I put this slide, this, this is a 16 thousandths. It should sound like that, and I'm tilting it up to get that. But it's not doing that. And on the low E string, it's more than twice. Now it's twice the height. I, I shouldn't say that. It's not quite twice. That's why I say never use your eyes to measure anything. But. Uh, the first fret action is definitely too high. You know, and I have to consider that this is a traveling guitar. And I don't want to get too close with anything because of all of the variables involved. So, things that make you go, hmm, Arsenio Hall. Remember that? Yeah. Uh... So, I think I'm going to um, likely uh, hang this one up. Hey, have fun, Gary. Enjoy your day, bro. Good to see you. Um, and um, I, I thank you all for, um, for being here. And uh, I uh, appreciate your uh, interest in my channel and, uh, and what I'm doing here. I'm trying to hopefully help. So, hopefully somebody learned something today. If you've got an acoustic guitar with a little bit of fret buzz you can put a shim under that saddle it's not that difficult and you don't have to pull all your strings off or do anything too crazy so hopefully it'll save you some time when you're doing repair work on on your instruments um, and if you do have trouble with it take it to a good luthier or someone you can trust uh, and uh, Preston I haven't got word on uh, the um, on that package yet they didn't give me any tracking with it i didn't pay for that uh but shoot me a message if and when you get it it should be any time now uh so hopefully uh you'll get that soon 
Uh, peace, everybody. Have a really wonderful, happy Monday. It's Monday here in the U.S. I know in other places in the world it's Tuesday now. So enjoy your day. Peace, y'all. Thanks for being here. Falcro, Gary Hubs, uh, Andy, um, let's see, Hugh, thank you, Preston, uh, Valerie, um, man. Uh, thanks, y'all, for being here. If I miss somebody, forgive me. Rody, uh, who else? Yeah. Oh, and Stephen, uh, thanks, you all. Peace.